So, so far, if we do a quick recap, we talked about state space analysis, and then if we're giving a state space system, All right, so we talked about concepts of controllability and observability. We talked about how to judge whether it's controllable or not. So uh, verifications. And then also tools, if the system is not controllable, tools to separate the controllable part and uncontrollable part. All right, so same thing for observability. Now, the reason that we spent efforts about uh, figuring out whether these properties are satisfied or not is because they relate to two important design tools in feedback controls. If a system is controllable, then we're going to see today how the system, it turns out, if the system is controllable, then the system is very easy to control, per se. So controllability directly relates to the concept of uh, state feedback control. And then the observability case, if the system is observable, then that means we will be able to infer the state of the system from the measurement. So that relates to the problem of state estimation. These two parts is going to contribute to a main theme of modern control theory design, state feedback and state estimation. So let's talk first about state feedback control. I'm going to talk about the general concept first, and then I'm going to talk about the technique when the system is observable. All right, so the technique is related to something that you are familiar with actually from your undergraduate control class, uh, placing the poles. And it turns out it's going to be super easy if the system is controllable. OK. We have talked about some of the motivations already. And we talked about the concept of uh, feedback, which is essential. This is closing the loop for control system design. And uh, uh, in transfer function approaches, if you think about anything, let's say uh, PID, lead lag, or root locus, the core is about placing the closed loop poles. If we do root locus, we were analyzing how the closed loop poles is going to evolve based on the gain of the controller. And if you are doing lead lag, we always check to uh, make sure that the closed loop poles are stable. So the primary goal is to achieve a proper map of the closed loop poles with output feedback. We use measurement of the output to design the control. Now, for state space systems, some of the key questions we want to ask is, what, how much freedom do we have? So if we are given a choice of different controls to design, what kind of freedom do we have in terms of the uh, closed loop poles? Are there are like fundamental system properties that makes the system to be more controllable or to be able to achieve higher performance. All right? And then at the end is uh, how do we design and implement these control laws? So I will set up the problem uh, first. I will talk about what kind of general system we are, that we are dealing with, and then uh, talk about the uh, mathematical notations and dimensions of the matrices that we are dealing with. So let's talk about the uh, n-dimensional state space system, A, B, 
see the matrices and some initial conditions. So x is in Rn, and u, the input vector, is, let's say, there are r input. And then the measurement, let's say, there are m total measurements in the output. As a quick recap, the poles of the transfer function, you see, they come from the characteristic polynomial when we compute the inverse, right? So the transfer function, we have to do the inverse, and then in the inverse calculation, we need to compute this determinant. So the determinant of si minus a will give the uh, poles of the transfer function. And uh, uh, we shall investigate. So the whole idea about uh, closed loop design is to use feedback to change the system by changing the eigenvalues of the closed loop matrix. All right, so we want to change from the eigenvalue of A to something that uh, uh, benefits the control tasks. All right, so maybe A is unstable, then the control task is to make sure that the closed loop poles will be stable. So that's our given goal. And let's take a look at the technical approach. We have the system, system, system dynamics written here, measurements, the input. Let's take a look at what we can do if we have a state feedback law that looks like this. So we have access to all the state x, and then the input uh, is going to be a function of the state. So let's say is uh, the gain is k, which is going to be a row vector. So it looks like this, and then the matrix x, the vector x, is going to look like this. So this will generate a uh, scalar output if x is a column vector and k is a row vector. And then the feedback law is like this. So we have the state measurement going through to the uh, input side, so u equals to negative kx. So, uh, and then there may be some external reference input that uh, is going to uh, give what we want. So this is the reference, and then this is the output. All right. So we will deal with this new input later. The primary goal for now is to make sure that we can to understand by this state feedback how we can change, how much we can change the closed loop, this entire closed loop, the eigenvalues. The closed loop system is if we combine these system dynamics, you can see that now u equals to negative kx plus u plus v. So let's put it inside to here then we can see that the closed loop dynamics is going to be ax bu is becoming negative bkx plus bv. So in other words, the state is going to be x dot equal to a minus bk times x plus bv. And the output remains the same. So output is c times x plus d times u. And uh, uh, the initial state is also going to be the same. Now, the closed loop eigenvalues, therefore, as you can see from here, it comes from the eigenvalues of the matrix A minus BK. So let's see. By this design variable k, how much we can change the closed loop eigenvalues? All right, this is the result that I want to show you. It turns out if the system is in controllable canonical form, then we can completely change all the eigenvalues of a minus bk 
by choosing a state feedback gain k. All right, so we can completely change the closed loop eigenvalues by the state feedback. Let's take a look at uh, the single input, single output case. So uh, let's say we are talking about a transfer function that looks like this. And uh, it is in the ABCD matrices are in controllable canonical form. So A is 1, 1, 1, 1, etc. And then negative alpha 0, negative alpha 1, and then all the way to negative alpha n minus 1. And then B is the usual 0 and then 1. So we know that uh, this is the denominator. This is where the pose of the transfer function comes from. And uh, it is related to the A matrix by this formula. So it equals the determinant of SI minus A over here. That's the observation to recognize first. So we want to be able to see, let's say we have some desired close to poles location that located at P1, P2, all the way to Pn. So this is the desired closed loop characteristic equations. Determinant of Si minus the closed loop A matrix, A minus Bk, equals the polynomial uh, determined by the pole locations. So let us write it. Let us say that if we write this out, if we write this uh, multiplication term out, the coefficients of the closed loop characteristic polynomial are gamma n minus 1 all the way to gamma 1 and gamma 0. All right. Our notations are, uh, let's say, k for single input, single output system is k0, k1, all the way to kn minus 1. So what is so unique about the controllable canonical form is that the B matrix is, ha it has a very specific structure, as we keep talking about. So if you multiply out B times k, then you can see that the result is, uh, you can see the first rows is going to be 0 if you multiply things out, right? B times k, the first row, all of them is going to be 0. Same for the second row, etc., until you hit the last row, which you're going to have 1 multiplying all these coefficients. So Bk has this very unique structure. It has all zeros except at the last row. Same thing for a matrix. So A has this very special structure as well. A lot of zeros and then uh, ones only at the off diagonal. So uh, A, if you read your notes, it's going to be all zero and then uh, one in the off diagonal and then negative alpha zero, negative all the way to negative alpha n minus one. So A minus BK Therefore, as you can see, is the first n minus 1 rows are completely the same. And then the last row is going to be negative alpha 0 minus k0. So it's a minus bk. So it's this, this term over here gets uh, into this last entry here. And then all the way to negative alpha n minus 1 minus k n minus 1. So the special structure of the controllable canonical form gives us this unique uh, structure of A minus BK. Super convenient to compute. And then the last row is where this gain, K1, K2, etc., going to kick in. All right, so once you recognize that, then you can see that A and BK a and A minus BK, they have the same structure. The only difference is that the last row is different. For A, we have negative alpha 0 to negative alpha N minus 1. And for A minus BK, we have negative alpha 0 minus K0. 
and then for all the entries, it's going to be uh, minus something in k vector. All right, so we know for sure that uh, the last row of the A matrix defines the closed loop characteristic polynomial. Uh, determinant of SI minus A equals SN plus alpha N minus 1, SN minus 1, all the way to alpha 1, S plus alpha 0. Therefore, because A minus BK, the only difference is in the entries over here. So therefore, if you calculate the determinant, it should be SN plus this part, alpha N minus 1 plus KN minus 1, and then all these coefficients is going to be alpha, alpha I plus KI. So that is the closed loop characteristic polynomial how it's impacted by the control gain k. Now, we, if you want to design the closed loop polynomial to be, let's say, these coefficients from, alpha, from gamma 0 to gamma n minus 1, then you can see that uh, how you can design k very obviously from this relationship. So you should design k0 to be gamma 0 minus alpha 0 and then uh, all the way to kn minus 1 should be gamma n minus 1 minus K alpha n minus 1. All right? So for controllable canonical form, very easy to design the feedback gains to uh, make the closed loop polynomial, closed loop uh, poles and eigenvalues to be anywhere you want. So if we want to make the recipe a little bit more formal, this is what we can do. So the pole placement by state feedback as a summary is to do that. First, figure out what we want. Figure out how we want to design uh, desired closed loop poles to be, let's say, P1 to Pn. And then... Uh, once we know that, once we have designed that, then figure out the closed loop characteristic polynomial. Figure out all these coefficients, gamma 0 to gamma n minus 1, based on the locations of the poles. And then figure out what is the open loop characteristic polynomial. What are the coefficients alpha 0 to alpha n minus 1? And then just do the K matrix design as this. Make it uh, gamma I minus alpha I. Then you're done. So the powerful result is that if the system is in controllable canonical form, we can arbitrarily place this pose. So that is the case pole placement by state feedback. If it's controllable canonical form. What about the case if it is not? So if the given state space realization is not in the controllable canonical form, uh, that's not the end of the world. If it's controllable, right? If the system is still controllable, then we can transform it into controllable canonical form by similarity transformation, right? So if the system is controllable but not in the controllable canonical form, after similarity transformation, which doesn't change the locations of the pole, right? Similarity transformation doesn't change the eigenvalue of the uh, A matrix. So we can still arbitrarily place the closed loop poles by state feedback. That's the key. This is the case, this is the concept if it is fully controllable. Let's take a look at uh, the situation when it is not fully controllable. So in this case, we cannot place the closed-up eigenvalues or the poles arbitrarily as we want. 
However, there is something that we still can do. So recall that we can decompose the state space system into uh, two parts, the controllable part and the uncontrollable part. Uh, in this case, if you think about what we can do if we apply control law that looks like this. Let's say it's negative kc times xc and then negative kuc times xuc. So the closed loop dynamics is going to be, as you can see, that it's going to be, so the A minus BK matrix is going to become AC bar, A12 bar, AUC bar minus BK. Uh, it's BC bar 0 times K. So write it out, you're going to have AC bar minus BC bar times KC bar, and then A12 bar minus BC bar times KUC bar. And then the second row doesn't change. So you can see already some hint. Right? So the state feedback law doesn't change the second row of the A matrix at all. What it can change is only the first row or the controllable part. So the close pose, as you can see, if you calculate the determinant, all right, so the determinant of the closed loop system, determinant of AC, uh, this is the closed loop matrix, is therefore, so the determinant of this minus lambda i, right, so it's going to be uh, equal to determinant of AC bar minus BC bar KC bar minus lambda i, 0, AUC bar minus lambda i. All right, so the determinant of this upper triangular matrix is going to be composed of the determinant of the diagonal elements totally. So it's determinant of AC minus BC bar, KC bar minus lambda i times the determinant of AUC minus lambda i. So the uncontrollable eigenvalues will remain. And uh, the controllable part, we can place the eigenvalues arbitrary as we want. So this gives the conclusion, right? If the system is not controllable but uh, stabilizable, meaning that if the uncontrollable modes, they are stable, then the system will be stabilizable, OK? We can still place the eigenvalues as we want for the controllable part to make them stable. So those are the powerful results if the system is controllable. And uh, uh, if it's not controllable but stabilizable, is those are the things we can do. All right, so these are the continuous time cases. Uh, the discrete time case, you can see that nothing will change, right? So for all the discrete time systems, the analysis will be exactly the same. The eigenvalue placement is exactly the same if we have a state discrete time system. Such as this, then you can see if U is a state feedback law, then overall the closed loop dynamics will be uh, just plug in the control law inside xk plus 1 equal to axk minus bk xk plus bvk. All right, so it equals a minus bk again xk 
and B weak K. That is the same closed loop uh, A matrix, A minus B K here. So what we talked about, the structure B makes the computation of B K extremely easy, and then A minus B K will continue to have the nice uh, structure. So the, uh, all the conclusions we have will be exactly the same. We can do arbitrary closed loop eigenvalue assignment if the system is controllable. This is if we use all the state, all right? So this is a very powerful control law. The control can actually essentially say, I can pull any state that I want in my design of the feedback system. So that is a strong uh, control law. And if we don't have all the state, let's say we only have output Y as our measurement to use. Then let's take a look at what the situation will be. So the situation will be plugging this output feedback law U equal to negative F times Y plus V to be inside here. Then we are going to get X dot equal to AX plus B times U. So it's negative B times F Y plus B V. All right, so AX is the same, and then Y is a function of X, so it's BF times CX plus BV. So therefore, the closed loop A matrix is A minus B times FC. All right, so A minus BFC, if you think about it, you no longer have that nice structure anymore. It's not as structured as A minus BK. So if B is in controllable canonical form, and then uh, you have an F matrix, so uh, if your output is just one dimensional, then this is a scalar. And then uh, C is going to be whatever uh, you have. Right, so in the C vector. So in this case, as you can see, if you multiply things out, the design freedom is much, much more reduced. When you design B minus, when you design A minus BK, if you recall, all the control gains, K0, K1, K2, etc., they're gonna impact every element in the last row of A. You don't have that in feedback output feedback. You can see your design, your overall design F is impacting the last row of A as a whole. It doesn't have individual controls to all these entries. So it is not as structured and you don't have the arbitrary closed loop eigenvalue placement. All right? Write it out as an exercise for, let's say, uh, single input, single output system. Then you can see uh, the limit of the design freedom here. As an example, as an example, uh, let's take a look at the case for spring mass damper system. we have all these A and B matrix. So this is not in the standard controllable canonical form, if you recognize. The standard controllable canonical form is one here, and then it should be one over here in the, uh, no, I take it back. Uh, it should be one over here. Uh, yeah, I was correct, so I was confused. Standard controllable canonical form, it should be one here and then one here as well. All right, uh, but it's not a big issue. You can you can do some normalizations in input. Let's say you introduce u star to be u over m, 
then the coefficient for u star will be 1. So this is in controllable canonical form, so we know that it is um, fully controllable. We can do arbitrary pole placement. So let's take a look at, uh, let's connect this fact into some of controllers, some of the controllers that you might have done in the past. So if you think about a PD control, proportional plus derivative control, all right? So we are doing, uh, PD control is, we are using uh, the, if, if we talk about three mass damper, is using, proportional case is using the position, right, as the output, plus the derivative of the position, plus something which related to velocity. All right, so that's PD control in the context of a spring mass damper. You can see that, so you can do the transfer function analysis, right? So U is negative K times position. This is the output, direct output. Minus K times velocity. This is the derivative term, all right? You can see this is precisely full state feedback. We are using all the state information. So this is negative k1, k2 times x1, x2. So we have actually full state feedback if we do a PD control. All right? So without looking at the detailed design law, then immediately as a control engineer, we would know that we can place the coastal poles anywhere we want. So this is not the case if we only have proportional control, right? If you only have proportional control, this is using only one state, the output, the position. Then you cannot do arbitrary close to pole assignment. So that is the power of state feedback and uh, what we can do in terms of closed-loop design.